Hi, I'm Lee Memolan, and in this video, we're going to look at audio clips. So there's two different types of clips you've got in Ableton Live. One is MIDI clips, where you have the notes that feed instruments, and then we have audio clips, which are basically audio files, which you could have off your phone recordings, or you can have from DJ sites or sample packs. Um, and once they're in Ableton Live, they're within the clip environment, so we call them audio clips. So at the moment, if you look on my screen, I've got a couple of uh, audio clips already in place as part of this small composition. Um, and as you see, when we double clip them, um, you get the, uh, the audio clip editor up. So you can see the waveform of the audio to edit or loop in different ways uh, from this viewpoint. So we're going to bring in a new loop to go alongside this. So there's a couple of things we need to be aware of when we're doing this. So first thing is we need to go to where we're going to find our uh, audio for our clips. So we're going to go to the samples folder. And based on what I've got already, I'm looking for something percussive to go as a, a layer on top of some existing drums. So I'm going to go to the search uh, box here and put in loop and then perk. If I just put in loop, it will give me lots of different loop um, audio files, but they could be synthesizer loops, percussive loops, drum loops, uh, exotic effects loops, all sorts of things. So we need to narrow it down a little bit more. Um, and then once I have uh, kind of my pre-refined selection of uh, samples to, to look at and turn into these audio clips, I want to basically play what I'm working on and then audition this um, these audio files on top of it to figure out which one gels and sits best. So I'll play this, and as I go through, I'm going to click into the browser and use my arrow keys and the preview switch here enabled to allow me to hear these different potential files on top of my existing work. Okay, so previewing a few of those different uh, potential audio loops, there's, there's at least two that I like in there, and, and I'm thinking of two different functions for them. So there's the one up here. And that loop just worked well in general alongside what was uh, playing there. So something that could just loop as it is. I don't need to make any modifications to that. But then I think it was this one here. Yeah, that one there, that's one that I want to bring in, but also mold a little bit myself to fit better within the context of what I'm creating. So um, it's really simple to get them into your project. I can double click. I can double click those. And then it'll load that in to um, the track for me. Now in that case, if I go back one, that's actually overridden an existing um, track that I've got with a loop in there. So instead of double clicking this time, because it was not an empty audio track I'm dragging, um, loading it to, I'll drag that into the empty space to the right, and then that one's loaded in. Just pull that alongside the other clip so they're in the same scene, the same row. And then I know it's going to be loud straight away, so I'm just going to pull that down a little bit in terms of volume on the mixer. And that adds a nice new depth to the, the existing sounds that I've got. So the other loop, let's have a look at that. So we have, that was the one. So we'll drag that into its own audio track there as well. And let's have a look at a couple of the immediate ways we can modify this to try and make it or explore where it might fit better within the context of this uh, work that I'm doing. Okay, so that's free running in terms of being a loop. I've not modified the play order of any of the parts or, or the speed that it's playing at. There's a couple of controls within the actual um, the sample editor that's down here where I can modify the tuning of the loop. Um, and that one has got percussive parts in it, so it does have certain amounts of uh, kind of melodic information in there for your ears to pick up on, so it might have a best pitch to play it at. And we can also play around with reversing the sample um, and also changing the kind of the nature of the rhythm that's in there too. So first I'm going to do the transpose function, which will change the pitch of this. So 
So listen to that, there's a couple of what we call sweet spots where it definitely kind of works musically with what's going on uh, alongside that loop. Um, and there's also a couple of sort of what less sweet spot parts where it's not quite um, marrying well with the other existing parts. So I need to narrow that down and decide which one I wanna go for. At this uh, point in time, a quick and easy way to give myself more options further down the line would be to actually set one of these settings. So I'm just using the up and down arrow once I've clicked and put focus onto that parameter just to move that incrementally up and down in a value at a time. I like it in its original pitch, so what I'm gonna do is use the duplicate command. So command, sorry, control click, and select duplicate, which is command and D is the shortcut key, and create a second copy of that loop, and then modify that one, and it just gives me like a, a should we say, a collection of opportunities later, further down the line. So I'm gonna play this new uh, duplicate of the clip and modify its transposition, so it has a different pitch um, than the previous version of it. And then do the same again, duplicate that. And launch that clip. Okay, it's a quick and easy way of taking one audio clip that had a potential to do a few different things within my project and then give them slightly unique properties. So that's transposition. Uh, the other option is to reverse the sample so I can again make a duplicate of that original or the last audio clip that I was using. And then there's a little reverse button here or the shortcut key is R to do this as well. Um, and just reverse the playback of the sample. So we go from forwards motion. So really simple ways of just giving ourselves various uh, access to the same original material. So this is in the context of staying in session view. Um, when we want to actually look at reordering the playback within a single audio clip, we need to leave session view. That's not what it's there for. Session view is to play a clip one at a time on a track and any edits that you may wanna do within that need to happen over arrangement view. So I'm gonna do that now with the first clip we're gonna drag that over into arrangement view so we can cut it up and start reordering the, the information that's there. So the shortcut key is really important here between session view and arrangement view. So with the cursor, we click here to move between the two views. But when we're doing a drag and drop, which is what we're gonna do now, we're gonna click and hold that audio clip. We're gonna hold down the tab key, which will move us into arrangement view. And then as long as I drop it on the right track, which is the last track called six loop at the moment, we drag that at the beginning. And although playback is still technically gonna happen in session view at this point, we also have a copy of that audio clip now ready for us to start modifying in arrangement view. So one last thing to note before we get stuck into editing this in arrangement view is the playback behavior, as I've said, is still playing from session view right now for all those clips. And we wanna maintain that behavior for everything but this clip that we're gonna try and work on now. So what we need to do is basically switch the playback for this particular track, the one called Six Loop, and that needs its playback um, to come from Arrangement View, not Session View. So we're basically disengaging that part of Session View. So if I hold um, over here, this is our single back to Arrangement button, so it only does it for this uh, track itself. And then you'll notice that the audio clip in Arrangement View is no longer greyed out, which means that now we are hearing that. At this stage, it will sound the same because it is the same. It's a duplicate of that original clip in session view. But once we modify it, we can hear the, the modifications we're, we're making. So we're going to basically chop this into a few bits and maybe reorder it or maybe just remove certain parts so there's rests in between when the loop plays and when the loop does not. Um, so the simplest way of making an incision, shall we say, or a, a slice to an audio clip is to use our pointing tool and click where we want our splice to occur. It's called split function in Ableton Live. And as soon as we found the place that we want this to happen, we can control to bring up the function menu, 
and then we go down to split, which as you can see is command and E is a shortcut key, and it splits that audio clip at that particular point on the grid. Now the grid's an important thing to be aware of here because depending on how microscopic you want to go with how many divisions you want this uh, audio clip to, to have, you might need more grid lines to appear so you can you know, make those split, um, splits happen within the audio clip. Um, so by default, if we move over to the grid section here, we have snap to grid, which we can turn off and that means everything's free form. We no longer have that kind of quantized behavior where, where we click is snapped towards the actual, the lines. Um, and what we want to do is change the actual grid size. So if you look on the menu here, it says widen grid and narrow grid. Now the command keys for that are command one and command two. One is narrow and two is widened. So if we're in already and I start changing these values, you notice the division line changes in the bottom right here, how many times this timeline is being divided and therefore how many places you can click to create your split. The splitting function, or should we say the resolution, so the amount of divisions that are available, is also zoom specific. So we can go to the top of the timeline, click and drag and move in, and you'll notice more grid lines appear for you to be able to click on and make these splits to. So that's when you want to get very microscopic and, and kind of chop things up a bit more. What I'm actually going to do is create a few more splits. So this time I'm going to use Command and E just to speed up my workflow a little bit. So I've clicked here, Command and E, clicked here, Command and E as well. And then let's make a, just, let's half those as well. So it's half a bar, so two beats per split. Now at the moment it's split, but the plain order, the nature of these has not changed at all. So what I'm going to do is actually introduce all of these clips once I've looped the area. So first I've highlighted the play area on a workout and arrangement view. So it's, if you look at the timeline, it's four bars of, uh, of, of time. And then I'm gonna control click and do loop selection. So now when I hit the space bar, you notice that it's looping around in arrangement view for the editing area that we wanna work in. So I'm just gonna now drag all those components out the way. So now those are out of the way, I'm gonna drag those in and listen as I move them around and decide where they best fall in my new edit for this, uh, this looped section. So pulling off a couple of the techniques from before, just quickly grab that one there and press the R key to reverse it. And that should give us like a, a pulling feeling towards this loop beginning again. Okay, so that's sounding good to me. Um, the only other thing I wanna do, again, borrowing off some of the things we already covered, is just transpose this one to be up a little bit or down a little bit to, again, create some sort of variation. Okay, so that's fine in arrangement view. At this point, if I wanted to, I could highlight the bits I don't want anymore and just hit backspace to remove those. So I've got a clean kind of uh, sequenced of, um, collection of audio clip edits. Um, however, if I want to go into session view again with this new version of this loop, I have to commit it to a new audio file or an audio clip in the Ableton Live environment. So I can then put it into session view as one object again, and then it will loop around that single object. So I'm gonna highlight all the bits I want to, what we call consolidate, and then control click and choose consolidate. So now that's a single brand new rendered audio file and that can be dragged into session view and either put in place of the original um, audio clips or um, it can sit alongside as I'm doing here as an alternate version of that loop. The only thing to be aware of when we're doing this process is session views loop orientated and when we consolidated those edits and put them into a new file, the looping function hasn't been automatically enabled. So there's just one thing we need to check, which is down here, 
which is the loop button. And once we have that on, if I hit play on my newly created audio clip, we've taken the audio clip from there, put it into arrangement view, modified it, re-rendered it into a brand new audio file and then brought it back into session view. So the key things that we've uh, done as well as the audio clips being edited in arrangement view and into session view is we've looked at transposition, so changing the pitch of the sounds that we're working on and we've looked at the reverse function as well. And don't forget, we also had a look at the library browser and using the audition panel, we audition a couple of potential uh, new layers to bring into this project.